The presidential limousine, famously known as the Beast, earns its name because it has more in common with a heavily fortified tank than with an ordinary car. Weighing between 15,000 and 20,000 pounds, the vehicle is built to survive nearly every conceivable attack, ranging from sustained gunfire to explosives and even chemical threats. Its frame is protected by five to eight inches of military-grade armor made from steel, aluminum, and ceramic composites, materials designed to absorb and deflect massive force. The doors alone are so reinforced that they rival the weight of a Boeing 757 cabin door, making any attempt at forced entry virtually impossible. Even the windows are designed for survival, built from multi-layered bulletproof glass measuring roughly five inches thick, strong enough to withstand direct hits from armor-piercing rounds. Its Kevlar-reinforced run-flat tires ensure the vehicle can continue moving even if every tire has been shot out or punctured. And if the tires are completely destroyed, the steel-reinforced rims allow the car to keep rolling forward until it reaches safety. Inside, the Beast even carries emergency medical equipment, including an onboard supply of blood matching the President's type. Hidden among the crowds, Secret Service agents move in plain sight, always protecting the President as he rides inside the armored Beast. After the assassination of President John F. Kennedy in 1963, when he was fatally exposed while riding in an open-top Lincoln Continental, presidents have never again used convertible cars for public appearances. The vulnerability of that open roof design to sniper fire permanently reshaped how presidential security is managed. Today, the beast never moves alone, but instead travels within a heavily armed motorcade, including decoy vehicles, communications vans, counter-assault teams, and sniper overwatch. Whenever the president goes abroad, this security operation becomes even more complex requiring advanced coordination across multiple agencies. Large U.S. military cargo planes are dispatched in advance to deliver armored vehicles and specialized support equipment, ensuring the president's safety at every destination. For longer journeys across continents, the President relies on the most iconic aircraft in American politics, Air Force One. Air Force One is not a specific airplane, but rather a call sign assigned to any Air Force aircraft carrying the Commander-in-Chief. The practice began in 1953 after a near mix-up in air traffic control highlighted the urgent need for a unique identifier. Yet the aircraft that most people associate with Air Force One is far from ordinary, serving as a technological marvel of aviation and command. The role is currently filled by one of two highly modified Boeing 747-200Bs, massive aircraft equipped to function as airborne command centers at 30,000 feet. Painted in the instantly recognizable light blue and white color scheme with United States of America, emblazoned across the fuselage, 
These aircraft are unmistakable symbols of American power. Inside, the plane serves as a flying White House, offering over 4,000 square feet of space for executive offices, conference rooms, secure communications, and even medical facilities. Air Force One is engineered to remain airborne indefinitely during emergencies, capable of receiving fuel mid-air, while being shielded by advanced defensive systems. These systems allow it to jam enemy radar and launch flares that can misdirect incoming heat-seeking missiles. Marine One, on the other hand, refers to any Marine Corps helicopter tasked with transporting the President. The Marine Corps operates dozens of helicopters within its presidential fleet, each instantly recognizable by its olive green body topped with a white roof. All of them are flown and maintained by Marine Helicopter Squadron One, better known as HMX-1. This specialized squadron is entrusted with transporting not only the president, but also the vice president and other senior officials. Because of the gravity of their mission, Marines ensure every aircraft in this fleet is maintained at peak readiness at all times. When the President lands on an aircraft carrier, he usually arrives aboard Marine One or a VH-3D Sea King helicopter with the entire deck transformed into a highly secured VIP landing zone. Some aircraft, such as the MV-22 Osprey, are never used to carry the President, but instead transport support staff, Secret Service agents, and media personnel. These aircraft are also nicknamed White Tops, owing to the same green and white paint scheme used across the fleet. For security purposes, Marine One is almost never identifiable from the ground, as it travels within a group of up to five identical helicopters designed to serve as decoys. The pilots who fly Marine One are Marine Corps officers selected through a rigorous and highly competitive process at Quantico, Virginia. While the position is prestigious, it carries immense responsibility because failure is never an option when the President is on board. Although Marine One does not operate in combat zones, Every mission is treated as a zero-failure assignment. Pilots must constantly evaluate weather conditions, flight paths, air traffic, and landing zones for each flight. These variables can change without warning, especially when adapting to the fluid nature of the President's schedule. A single day of presidential travel can cost over a million dollars, covering everything from aircraft fuel and security teams to motorcades and communication support. The presidential motorcade itself is a massive and tightly choreographed spectacle that demonstrates both precision and power. At the front, motorcycle police units lead the way, clearing traffic and securing the route for the convoy. Crowds of onlookers are kept behind metal barricades to maintain a safe perimeter along the streets. Snipers are deployed on rooftops along the route, scanning the area and remaining ready to respond to threats in an instant. During ceremonial parades, the motorcade slows down giving the public a chance to wave and see the president up close.
On Inauguration Day, more than 5,000 service members from across the military, including the Reserves and National Guard, help manage the parade. Ladies and gentlemen, the joint Even though the event itself lasts less than an hour, months of detailed planning and coordination go into ensuring its success. This preparation involves working with military units, marching bands, floats, and various organizations to create both a safe and celebratory environment. Behind every presidential journey lies a meticulously planned operation where security, strategy, and precision ensure the Commander-in-Chief is always protected. If you're enjoying this content, subscribe for more videos like this.